part five section two chapter fifteen of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter fifteen the universalist church the real father of american universalism is a man who never saw america and whose name ought to be rescued from oblivion this was james relly a preacher of the whitefield or calvinistic methodists but who finally carried his calvinism to the conclusion that if christ paid the debt of the sins of all men then all men must ultimately be saved he proclaimed his new views with great ardor and drew together a congregation in london about the middle of the eighteenth century in seventeen fifty nine he published a book which prepared the ground in america for the coming of murray this was entitled union or the consanguinity of christ and his church the reasoning was rigidly calvinistic throughout and this was the first form of modern universalism relly died in seventeen seventy eight and his congregation soon dispersed there is now no organized congregation of universalists in europe except in scotland where a small mission is sustained relly is connected with america by john murray a member of his london congregation and an enthusiastic disciple he was also trained in rigid calvinistic principles and by a family discipline of the harshest kind it is hardly a wonder that he revolted from this system murray came under the influence of wesley and was much drawn to the more joyful ways of the methodists he afterwards went to london where he completely lost his faith and fell into dissipation then he heard whitefield and became his zealous convert he was at first very deeply prejudiced against Raleigh, but he read his book and heard him preach and the result was that murray embraced the universalist creed in a spirit of thorough dejection over his financial and other losses he sailed for america in seventeen seventy this is the date of the first universalist preaching in america murray at first kept his peculiar faith in the background but it at length cropped out and he received an invitation to preach at gloucester massachusetts where relly's book had made some silent conversions and where the first universalist church was organized in seventeen seventy nine murray became the pastor of this church remaining there till seventeen ninety three though still itinerating through new england and the middle states preaching universalism he had his share of persecution but he was never daunted for that a mob surrounded a church in boston where he was preaching a large stone was thrown at his head murray picked it up with the remark this argument is weighty and solid but it is neither rational nor convincing then the people shouted pray sir leave the pulpit your life is in danger with your good leave was murray's brave reply i will pursue my subject and while i have a thus saith the lord for every point of doctrine i advance not all the stones in boston unless they stop my breath shall stop my mouth or arrest my testimony murray preached in boston from seventeen ninety three to eighteen o nine he died september third eighteen fifteen in the seventy-fifth year of his age though murray was the founder of universalism in america he was by no means the first to preach the doctrine joseph gatchell of marblehead massachusetts in sixteen eighty four was brought before suffolk county court for teaching that all men shall be saved and was sentenced quote, to the pillory and to have his tongue drawn forth and pierced with a hot iron end quote. george de benneville preached the same doctrine in pennsylvania maryland virginia and the carolinas this de benneville came to america in seventeen forty one after a romantic career in the old world he preached among the dunkers the rev richard clark rector of st philip's episcopal church in charleston south carolina from seventeen fifty four to seventeen fifty nine with other ministers of his church as well as doctors mayhew and Channy, two of the ablest puritan ministers of boston were pronounced advocates of the final salvation of all 
contemporary with murray but independent of him other men proclaimed the same gospel adam streeter in rhode island was one of these he preached in seventeen seventy seven the most brilliant man of that time was elhan winchester he far surpassed murray for solid qualities of mind and the saintliness of his character and the eloquence of his preaching achieved a great deal for early universalism his field was philadelphia seventeen eighty to eighty seven his theology was of a much more evangelical type than either the hard calvinism of murray or the liberalism of ballou we now come to the most illustrious name in the history of american universalism hosea ballou like winchester and caleb rich he began as a baptist he became a convert to the new faith in seventeen ninety two and after several brief pastorates he settled as the minister of the second universalist society of boston in eighteen seventeen there he died june seventh eighteen fifty two in his eighty-first year ballou established a universalist periodical literature and by pen no less than by voice labored with all his might for his hopeful creed he emptied universalism of its deeper elements making it semi-unitarian and departing from the rational theory of winchester he proclaimed the crass notion of the immediate happiness of all after death his idea of christ was equally shallow ballou is a mighty name in the universalist theology and while the denomination has grown out of his doctrine of the instantaneous heaven of men who die in their sins his latitudinarian teachings on the general christian system have had a widespread and profound influence on the later universalists it is an interesting fact that as early as seventeen eighty six the right of the gloucester society of universalists to be exempted from the parish taxes was confirmed after various appeals and delays by the highest court of the colony several congregations in massachusetts and rhode island united with that in gloucester in holding an association at oxford massachusetts in seventeen eighty five the churches in and around philadelphia formed a convention in seventeen ninety and in seventeen ninety two the churches of the eastern states formed a similar conference the philadelphia convention went out of existence in eighteen o nine but the eastern convention still meets annually under the name of the universalist general convention the government of these churches is strictly congregational the universalist denomination has made an honorable record in literary and educational work though numerically a small body it has four colleges and three theological schools and in new england and new york five academies it has a number of earnest and high-minded adherents and many who are in hearty sympathy with the evangelical faith there is at present a strong leaven of rationalism working in the universalist church and the battle is now waging between the orthodox and the unitarian wing in its origin universalism stood firmly on the calvinistic platform and in cordial agreement with the essential elements of the creed of the church catholic if the present unitarian movement in the universalist church succeeds the descent will mark one of the most instructive developments in the history of the church End of chapter fifteen